Introduction to Neural Networks with Java, Class 9, Part 1. In this class session, we're going to learn about pruning. Pruning is a neural network technique that you may want to employ after training. Once you've trained the neural network, you've gotten the neural network down to a point where it is producing an error rate that you're happy with. However, this neural network may not be the most optimal neural network that there is. How did you pick the number of neurons in the hidden layers? This was most likely a tri trial and error sort of process. Pruning allows you to analyze the hidden layers and see if there are any neurons that can be removed. Pruning also allows you to take this the other way and start with a neural network with no hidden layers and see how many neurons you actually need in the hidden layers by a sort of automated computer control trial and error process. These are the two ways that you can prune. There is selective pruning and incremental pruning. These are the two types of pruning that we will discuss in this course. Selective pruning is where you analyze the hidden layers of a neural network and you look at those neurons and analyze their connection weights to the next layer. Then you either pick a neuron based on low connection weights because that is a neuron that is not really going to contribute much to the overall solution and remove it. Then you analyze the neural network with a training set and you see how badly that hurt your error rate. It will most likely hurt your error rate in some way. Sometimes if the neuron was contradictory to the rest of the problem, it may actually improve it, but this tends to be the exception rather than the rule. Once you have picked which neuron you can remove, if it does not have, if it does not affect the overall error rate, to the point that you're no longer satisfied with the neural network, this is a good neuron to remove. And you'll see routines that allow you to remove a neuron. It's not that hard. You simply remove all of its connections and its threshold value from the weight matrix. Once the neuron is removed, you may have a more successful neural network. The other method of training or, or of pruning is incremental pruning. Incremental pruning, you start with a low number of hidden neurons and or layers and you increment this upward and you train the neural network at each step. Now this is more time consuming because you're going to have to train a lot more often. With selective pruning you had already trained the neural network and you now pick neurons that are not that useful and you remove them. With incremental pruning, you don't really know how many hidden layers or how many hidden neurons you're going to actually have, so you simply start counting upwards. Each of these is a separate training session, so it can increase the amount of training you have to do considerably. However, incremental pruning can be very helpful when you have no idea how many hidden layers or how many hidden neurons you want to actually add to the neural network. We will look at both incremental pruning and selective pruning in this class session. In this part, we are going to look at pruning in general and what it does for a neural network. Pruning is a process that gets its name from a process that gardeners go through with plants. If you look at this plant, you will see that there are several leaves that are not really contributing much to the plant. They're yellow and dead and need to be pruned from the plant. Here I am pruning these leaves from the plant and removing them to make the plant overall more healthy. This is the process that you go through with neural networks. Certain neurons are not contributing much to the overall well-being of the neural network. They are not contributing to good solutions. Therefore, they can be pruned from the network. Now let's see how this applies to a neural network. Here you see a neural network. I'm showing the weight values from the hidden layer to the output layer. The weights from the input to the hidden layer are really not meaningful. Why is that? First, let's look at what you can actually prune from a neural network. You can only prune from the hidden layers. You cannot prune from the input or the output layers. Pruning from the input or the output layers changes the very makeup of the solution that the neural network is trying to solve. When you design a neural network, usually the first thing you do is design the inputs and outputs to match the data that you are feeding the neural network. 
if you've changed what your input is, you need to rethink the entire neural network. And this is not just a pruning type operation. Pruning is making the neural network more efficient, not changing the very nature of what the neural network is trying to do. So here we look at the three hidden neurons. It could be that we could remove one of these three hidden neurons and make the neural network more efficient. Look at the weights. Hidden 1, 2, and 3 all have weights between themselves and the one output neuron. Hidden neuron 1 has 0.2, which is small but still somewhat significant. Hidden 2 has 0.9, and hidden 3 has 0.01. We could probably remove hidden neuron 3 and still have the same approximate output. The error rate would probably go up, and that may be acceptable. That is something that would need to be evaluated to see if we could actually prune this. This is called selective pruning, because you are selecting which neuron you actually want to prune from the neural network. Selective pruning is not the only way to go. You can also use incremental pruning. Incremental pruning can take more time. For incremental pruning, you focus on the hidden layer and start with a relatively small number of hidden neurons, perhaps just one. You gradually add more neurons, retraining the neural network each time. This allows you to select which number of hidden neurons the neural network was trained most effectively with. As previously stated, this can take a considerable amount of time and should not be used for a neural network where you've already trained it because you'd be throwing away the training where, that you had previously accomplished because you need to retrain the neural network with each hidden neuron. As the hidden neurons are added, we will eventually see that perhaps three or perhaps two is the optimal number for this neural network. So far, we've introduced selective pruning and incremental pruning. You may be wondering when to use which. Though incremental pruning is more labor intensive for the computer and takes longer to execute, it is not always the wrong solution. Both selective and incremental pruning have their place. Selective pruning is best to be used on existing neural networks that have already been created that you simply want to optimize. You've already created your neural network and trained it. You don't want to go back to the drawing board. You just want to see if some hidden layer neurons can be removed and create for a simpler neural network. Incremental pruning is used more for a new neural network that you have no idea how many hidden neurons you want to actually create. The incremental pruning algorithm can be used to initially train the neural network and find out of the training methods which number of hidden neurons is going to perform the best. This allows the neural network to automatically determine how many neurons should be in each of the hidden layers. It can take a long time to train a neural network, and you may not want to train the neural network for every single combination of hidden neurons. Because of this, incremental pruning algorithms will often simply train for a certain amount of iterations and compare each of the numbers of hidden neurons for this limited number of iterations and use that as just a quick rough estimate as to the number of hidden neurons that can be used in the neural network. Then the neural network will be trained using that optimal set of hidden neurons for a error rate that is more acceptable. This will take longer because we will be training it through many more iterations to come up with a error rate that is acceptable. Generally, this is the criteria that you use to choose between incremental and selective pruning techniques for neural networks. Now that you've seen an overview of pruning neural networks, we're going to look at the two different pruning algorithms in detail. We're going to see how to implement them as well. We're going to begin with selective pruning in the next class session. We hope you will continue on with part two. Thank you. This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.